guys, welcome to Plumbing with Tim. I had a lot of people in the last few months ask me, Tim, could you show us a video on how to hook the power up to an electric hot water heater? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do today, and I'm gonna show you what we need to do to get started. Hands down, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is locate where the breaker panel box is to the house. Locate and try to find and decipher which one of those breakers, usually on a water heater, usually is gonna be a double breaker that's rated at 240. Um, but not all electrical panels are marked correctly. So you're gonna have to make sure that you get the right one and I'm gonna show you the tools needed to make that happen. Tools that you will need to do this is a simple multimeter, a pair of side clips, needle nose, sometimes possibly a six and one screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver, an electrical whip adapter, good wire nuts. Once you remove the electrical whip, make sure nothing is touching. Remember, we don't know if that breaker you turned off was right or not. You're gonna end up taking your multimeter. You're gonna set it to where it says ACV or 250, 200 volts, right? And then turn it on and test your leads. If the power is still on to this water heater, most water heaters, it should read 240 volts. As you can see, we found the proper breaker and we're rated zero, which means these lines have no juice going through them. Let's take to the next step. You wanna start by taking off your screws on the top panels where the power is. Usually they have Phillip head screws, but some of these water heaters, that's why you have a six one screwdriver. You can take one of these ends off and it'll act as a socket to take that hexagon top screw out of there. But in this case, it's Phillip head screws. We've loosened them up and we'll remove it. Remove the second one, and here's what we're looking at. Looking at a red and a black wire. Let's go to the next step. We're going to take these panels off, set them aside, and secure your screws somewhere. Usually, that's a pretty good spot to have them. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our little electrical adapter. Now, a lot of these water heaters, when you take them out, there usually might be one already in the existing one that you can take and replace and put over to the new one. But in this case, we didn't have any. If you don't have any of these, it's a good idea to carry some of these on your van, pick them up at a big box store or uh, an electrical supply. We're gonna take by starting with our little adapter. We're gonna slide that through and get all three of our wires, our ground as well. It's a little tricky doing this one-handed. As our hot, our lead, our common, whatever, and neutral. You have that sitting there like that and let me show you what you do next well now that we have our little adapter electrical adapter sitting here we're going to take our plate that covers our electrical panel on our water heater the one that's got the hole in it <laughs> this is the top side usually when you see the green ground screw and we're going to slide that through the top plate like so and we're going to slide that up until that adapter attaches and take our little nut Slide it in there, nice and easy, don't skin the wiring. And then we're gonna go ahead and tighten that nut up. This is the bottom side of there. See that? That's what we're looking at. Just like that. On to the next step. Now we're gonna take our plate with our power lead from the house, kind of just bend them up like that. See that? And get these other two lines that are coming out of the water here out of the way. I'm going to take and place that thing down on top where it goes on a water heater. Kind of like this. See that? I'm going to have a screw here and a screw over here. We're going to secure that down and I'll show you how to tie in the electric lines together. One screw in. Get the first screw secure. Don't tighten it all the way yet. You might have to make a couple adjustments. Go ahead with your second screw. Kind of just get that so it sits down in place. That's what you're looking at. Now we have our main feeds coming from the house around. So those two lines come from the heater. Uh, pretty no brainer. It doesn't matter which one of these you hook to those two, ground being by itself it's gonna work. So there is no right or wrong when it comes to putting those two together. Just hook them up, those two to those two with wire nuts. Before you hook that all up, 
that's a small compartment. So you're gonna wanna have to finagle these lines in here to stuff them into place. And that's so you can get everything in there. Usually bend, uh, this is the lines that are coming from the water heater. So we still got our live mains from the house. Get them down to a shorter area, which is more manageable to get tucked up inside of that little compartment. Just be careful, you don't wanna skin these lines. When I say skin is rub any of that coating off there because if you've got a bare line and something hits, bang, it's going to short out. Okay, let's go ahead and get these tied into there. All right, red to white. Good wire nut. And that's going to catch both of those wires. All right, before you start tucking and doing any of that stuff, make sure you get both of these tied in with wire nuts. Put them on there nice and tight. Do not substitute wire nuts with electrical tape. All right, take the time to get the right stuff. Now where it's getting tricky. Right, take and bend this down. Don't skin the lines, I keep saying that. Trust me. I tuck them down so they're down in that compartment and got room for the other panel to go on. Something like that. Nice and tidy, got room to put the panel on. Now, listen, ground is very, very important, especially here in Florida. We live in the lightning capital of the world. Everything needs to get ground. If you don't, you're gonna fry something out. If you go on a hot water heater and there's no ground available, make sure to let the customer know that they may need to get an electrician out here to protect their investment and make them sign off on it that there was no ground so they don't come back on you saying that you never grounded it and now you're out of the money to have to replace that heater because it got struck by lightning. Let me show you the best way to do this. Now this ground wire is a little bit longer than I want. My whole premise is, is I want to cut this about right up in here, take and bring it down and loop it around that ground screw, right? I don't want too much excess just hanging out. We're going to take our side snips that I showed you it's got the little needle nose and we're going to clip that bend it over here and around that screw see that pinch that together it's up underneath that screw. Now we can tighten that screw down. So we have everything secured up underneath there. It's time to take our other plate, kind of focus it down right like that. Get our last little screw that we held on to. See if we can't line that hole up right there. Like I said, I'm doing this one-handed, so this is interesting. There we go. Find that hole and get it in there be tricky just don't give up have some patience there we go beautiful voila that my friends is how you hook up the power to an electric hot water heater all right take your time don't force anything be patient never turn these hot water heaters on to the power until it's full of water <laughs> That's all the time we got for this one. Thanks so much for watching the video. Any questions or comments about how to hook up the power to electric water here, I by no means am a licensed electrician. But being a plumber and have to work around things like this, I find myself having to work around power and knowing how to hook these kind of things up. Thanks so much, and don't forget to keep plumbing.